Okay, so we got the initial cleaning done on the block here. Now, we will do another cleaning before the heads go on, but I've got all the stuff cleaned out of the perimeter gasket hole, which you want to be careful when you do that. You don't cut yourself because this is pretty sharp. Um, cylinder bores are cleaned. We've got everything pretty much ready to go that we can start dropping cylinder kits in. And like I said, we'll come back through and do another cleaning before the blower and the heads and all that stuff go on. Got the first piston ready to load here. We've vacuum checked to make sure that we've got a good seal on the wrist pins. Double checked that the expanders behind the oil rings here are not overlapped so that they'll fit in there. Ring packs have been clocked. So now we just gotta load it in the liner. Okay, so this cylinder kit is loaded. I just gotta get a rod bearing in it, but I'm putting these caps over the end of the rod bolts. So when I drive them through the engine, I don't risk marring the crankshaft. So we'll get our new bearing in on this half. I'll get the other half ready to go. And then this first cylinder kit is ready to load into the engine. Just working on going through now and we're gonna snug up these rod bolts. And then we'll go through and get the next one. Keep working our way down the line. And then I'll come back through once we're finished and get them all torqued. But for right now, they're just gonna get snugged up. When you go to put these rods on too, you need to make sure that you put them on the crank in the right orientation. They are offset to one side. One side's fatter than the other. You want the narrow side to be towards the next rod, so the fat end goes towards the outside of the crank. If you put that on wrong, the engine won't turn over. There's our first cylinder kit. Now there is a little bit of oil from when we loaded the piston, which I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there. I'll probably just take a nice clean rag and wipe it around just to make sure that we don't have any uncovered surfaces because the heads will not be going back on today. So I want to make sure that everything stays nice and oiled so it doesn't get any corrosion or anything on it. But one down, I think we're just going to keep working our way down this bank and we'll hop over to the other one. to get the rod out, go get it cleaned up, and then reinstall it. Take some assembly lube, coat the wrist pin. So let's get it started in there. There is a little bit of wiggle for the rod here, so just get it barely through and come in. Get it pushed through the rest of the way. Now you're going to be left with some assembly lube pushed out. Clean out what you can, but wipe a little bit around the edge there so you have something to help push in the retainer that's going to seal these up. And whatever I wipe off, take over on this side. these and very carefully get installed on the side here my hammer so you want to make sure that these are centered when you start oh, I just bumped it there hammer and with one good hit get it seated your side sticking up take the tool put your vacuum cup on there pull the vacuum and sit and watch make sure it's not going to lose its vacuum now that's done we're going to repeat that the other side and that's going to retain the wrist pin and stop oil from coming out around the wrist pin through the intake ports 
filling the air box and causing a lot of smoking issues. So these are behind the oil control rings and as you see right there these have a gap in them just like everything else but you want to make sure that when you put the rings on that these are touching and not overlapped. If they're overlapped and you try to load a cylinder you'll break a ring. So I usually put the first one on and then just continuously watch until that second ring is over to make sure that these are face to face and not laying over each other because like I said if they're laying over each other you're gonna have some real problems. So right there you guys can see that they are touching and not overlapped. That is what you really got to watch out for when you're putting oil control rings on these. Other than a rod bearing, that is the next cylinder ready to load. I'll wait and put the bearings on until we're ready to do this. But this is a two-person job and I'm currently down here by myself for a little bit. So I'm just going to keep building the rest of this bank and we will set that aside and get it put in there in a minute. This is our next rod. It needs to go take a bath real quick. We'll come dry it off and then we'll lay out some fresh paper towels and get the next kit built. Not really a whole lot to show as we do this. I just got to repeat that same process eight times and get eight cylinder kits ready to go. So when we're cleaning these two, we're also wanting to inspect to make sure that these rods are straight and not bent and that we've got good flow through the oil passage and through the sprayer at the top. This sprays oil out at the bottom of the piston to cool it off. We're going to make sure all those passages are nice and clean. They're not obstructed. You're not getting any junk out of those. But just stuff to check out while you're cleaning the rods and doing your inspections. So when you go to do these, they're going to come with different types of oil rings, the spacers. So we've got white and purple in this set. The purple are the ones we're running. So the white ones we don't need. We've got four oil rings. One of them is silver. That is the top oil ring. The other three are identical. And all four of the compression rings for this kit are the same. So those don't matter. There is a little O on them though. You can see that. That goes towards the top of the piston. So just make sure you keep an eye out to which pair of these you're using. This changes based off of the engine application. So they've got ones that are for like transit buses for the city and for highway coach. So you want to make sure that you match your setup to what you're trying to do with the engine. So now that those are in, start oiling up my rings, get them installed. So that is what you don't want to see right there. So I was warning you about the ends have gone over each other. So you push it back, reset it, and there we go. Now we are back to they're not overlapped so we can get the next ring installed. But you want to make sure you check that constantly because you will break the oil rings if that's overlapped and you try to drive them in. So that piston's pretty much ready to go in. Got it cleaned up. All the rings are on. This is just engine oil, straight 40 weight. Work it around inside the liner so that everything's got a nice coat of oil in there. We'll take a Kentmore installing tool, put it up there. Gonna give it a touch of oil too. I'm gonna wipe that around and then we're just gonna take the entire loaded cylinder, push it in and straight down into the liner and it'll be loaded. So it is just past the tool, so now I should be able to lift the installer off. Go ahead and just sit the rod cap back on. And that one's ready. We'll throw a rod bearing in it before it goes in the motor. But I don't like putting them in ahead of that schedule. We don't have to worry about dust, dirt, and all that getting inside the bearing. So there's one more to do. And then we'll have the entire bottom bank loaded and ready to go in. All right, it's time to load the last piston for this bank. So you put it in there, get it started rod cap off In there. Now 
you would never want to tap through here if that was your new bearing. This is the old bearing. It hasn't been taken out yet. But you don't want to have to tap hard. If you're doing that and you're really hitting on it, anything more than just like you would tap with the palm of your hand to get it in there, it's too much resistance. You've got a problem. You'll end up with a broken ring or something like that. I put that cap on backwards. It doesn't matter. It's going to come back off anyway so I can get the bearings in it. But... Anyway, but you want to be very light taps on it. You don't want to be hitting hard. Just You don't want to smack with your hand down in here because you're going to end up cutting yourself on the bolts or the edge of the rod. So, now that's ready to go. Got three cylinder kits sitting there. Ready to load them in the engine. All right. We got one more rod assembly put in. I'm just going to keep working down the line. Everything's pretty much set up, so they're going to keep loading them through the top side, and I'm going to catch them down here and get them put on the crank. Uh, number three is in, so we just have number two left to do, and the bottom bank will have all of its cylinders installed. Alright, just snugging up the last one, and this will be all four for the bottom bank in. And there we have the first four cylinder kits loaded into the engine. Unfortunately, we aren't going to be able to get all eight in today like I wanted bit of an issue over here and turn around back to the truck and I'll show you what we found. So for those of you who don't know what you're looking at, some of you figured it out immediately. This is a rod bearing. See the thickness issue there? These are inline rod bearings. So two of the eight they sent us were for an inline, not a V. So these don't get to go in the engine. It's also a holiday weekend on a Saturday, so I won't even be able to get a hold of them so probably Tuesday. Now when we looked at that, those are both the same part number. Let me grab a V1 here. Definitely a V bearing there. So one DP, one DP, and the last no, digits are uh, P, but uh, the center number right there is different from the V to the inline. My guess is this wasn't on purpose. I think that these all got put back in the wrong box. Somebody didn't look. They grabbed them. The boxes are the same size. Last digit, beginning, looks the same. I think that's what happened. But that's going to cause a problem. I don't think I'm going to go ahead and build the other two cylinder kits that I can put in for that bank. I'm just going to wait and we'll do that entire bank at once. But that's going to put a bit of a standstill to the uh, reassembly of this engine because I'm not going to go through and do all the work and rush right now to have these wrong because it'll probably be half a week before I see the correct ones.